broader idea of Magic Carpet is simply to make landing at the ship easier. We make it more repeatable, we make it safer, and just in general, less workload, easier for the pilots to do a very difficult task and to do that repeatedly. Magic Carpet is kind of a two-part program. It's uh, changed the flight controls on the uh, Super Hornet, so it adds direct lift control. And then the other part is some HUD symbology that uh, gives us some uh, ship's queuing that makes it easier to land on the boat. What we're doing differently here is that we're really providing the pilot with direct command of what he's trying to do, which is control flight path. So the flight control com computer is uh, controlling and closing the loops around flight path, which is important for landing on the carrier. That's something we don't do today. As you're trying to land, the boat is moving forward and moving away to your right. So you have to continuously chase after the boat to get to it. All the symbology we have right now in the HUD or in our heads-up display kind of is in reference to the actual airplane. So what is the airplane doing? Well, this new HUD symbology, you actually input the speed of the boat and it takes into account the winds. So now it accounts for that movement of the boat. So I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to lead that. I don't have to have that experience to figure out what is the boat doing. I just put the velocity vector now in the landing area on the boat and that's exactly where the airplane goes because it, it already compensates for the movement of the boat. It's going to reduce the workload so that we can focus on um, maintaining the proper glide slope, the proper approach uh, to the ship so that we, go, we don't get too low or we don't get too high and we can, it'll be easier for day and night um, and then we can take that reduction in workload and stress overall throughout the flight and maybe apply that to other areas, to tactics or whatever, so you can focus more on that and making the ship landing more an administrative task. It definitely makes a lot safer. I flew about 30 touch and goes in a two hour period and I don't think I would have had the mental capacity to be able to do that safely if it wasn't for this technology. And I think that's just going to make it safer when guys are coming back from long missions, uh, you know, six, seven hours over Afghanistan, Iraq, or wherever, and they come back to the boat, they're really tired and exhausted. This is just going to make it a no-brainer to land at the boat. From the other perspective, is from the LSO perspective, or landing signal officer, the guys on the ship that are helping the, the planes land, um, safety is their number one concern. The LSO knows that the, the jet will now hopefully the throttle is linked up and the, the attitude of the jet is constant, so he's not as worried about that, that new pilot with pulling the throttles back to idle and possibly you know, crashing in the back of the ship. So to date, uh, we're really getting very good correlation with our simulation results to what we're seeing in the airplane. So in terms of lowering the pilot's workload, in terms of performance on the flight path, holding and controlling the, the, the meatball, or landing uh, is, is all there. The uh, overall result is much more repeatable, much more consistent between pilots, even with different techniques. And that's the goal of taking this to the fleet between new guys and very old, salty guys that have been around for 25, 30 years. The deviations that you should expect are not going to be much smaller you know, across the board. It's awesome to be able to be in one of the first landings in Magic Carpet to experience this technology. And, you know, I just want to tell everybody in the fleet that. It is awesome, and the first time anybody flies it, they're just going to be like, wow, this, this is what I want, this is what I need.